Now that Joe Biden has secured a win in the general election, so-called moderate Democrats are attacking the left by arguing that leftist messaging and ideology is the reason why moderates lost their reelection bid. It's not the moderates fault, it's allegedly the leftists fault. It's allegedly Black Lives Matter matters fault. Um, and Jim Clyburn, uh, Representative Jim Clyburn, tried to make that argument during a recent interview. Let's take a quick look. I can tell you about the first congressional district of South Carolina. I really believe that that's what caused uh, Joe Cunningham his seat. And I can also tell you about the Senate here in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie Harrison began, started to plateau when defund the police showed up with a caption uh, on TV right across his head. That stuff hurt Jimmy, and that's why I spoke out against it a long time ago. Right. I've always said that these headlines can kill a political effort. Uh, we are all about making headway, and I just hope that going forward, we will think about each one of these congressional districts mm -hmm. and let people represent their districts. Now, progressives didn't lose any seats. In fact, there were progressives who decided to challenge incumbent Democrats, people like Jamal Bowman, for instance. You also had Cori Bush. They won their elections. And so AOC tried to make that point during an interview with Jake Tapper over the weekend. Let's take a look. I believe that we need to really come together and not allow Republican narratives to tear us apart. You know, as you mentioned, we have a we have a slimmer Democratic majority. It's going to be more important than ever for us to work together and not fight each other. And so, when we kind of come out swinging, not 48 hours after Tuesday, when we don't even have solid data yet, um, pointing fingers and, and telling each other what to do, it, it deepens the division in the party and it's irresponsible. It's irresponsible to pour gasoline on these already very delicate tensions in the party. So we can help. It's not saying that every member can, has to campaign uh, as a progressive in a traditional progressive way, but it's to say that we have assets to offer the party, um, that the party is not not yet, you know, fully leaned into or exploited. And I believe that we can take some of these seats. You know, I think Katie Porter is an amazing example. Michael Levin, mm -hmm. um, there are swing seats. Every single swing seat member that co-sponsored Medicare for All won their reelection. Right. And so the conversation is a little bit deeper than that, than, than just saying, you know, anything progressive is toxic and a losing message. And yeah. so this is a continuation of the argument that we saw, um, you know, Abigail Spanberger make during a Democratic caucus call. She was angry about defund the police. She was angry about uh, what she referred to as socialist policies. And she said that it nearly cost her election. Um, but AOC has some thoughts on that as well. Before I get to them, Cenk, why don't you jump yeah, so AOC also did an interview in the New York Times, and I love that because she pointed out things that I think were, again, indisputable, etc. But honestly, I'd go further than AOC, and there's one thing that I didn't love about that interview is that it sounded too defensive. So you're gonna be shocked to find out, I think we should I disagree. Go. Yeah, anyway, I think, keep going. Yeah, I think we should go on the offense. Um, so. When I say we, in this case, I mean progressives. We're constantly defending. Did we cost? They charge you guys. Guys cost this election, which is what they do every time after they lose. And then AOC does a good job of defending, but there's no one out there going, "No, wait, I got news for you. You cost us the election." Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, you told us that you had this great battle plan. You picked Amy McGrath in Kentucky. She got annihilated after having more money than God, you picked all these candidates who got clowned. So there's one person definitely responsible for the loss in the Senate. His name is Chuck Schumer. So the losses in the House were less, but perhaps even more surprising. And the person responsible for that is Nancy Pelosi. Second person responsible is the person that's the head of the DCCC, Sherry Bustos. She's already stepped down because she barely won her own election. So why are we having a conversation mm -hmm. about progressives? We should be having a conversation about should we replace leadership? The answer, by the way, is definitely yes. 
Yeah, okay, I agree with you on that. Um, but you know, I, I can't blame AOC. I think she did do a good job in defending progressives and uh, their ideology. Um, but honestly, it, it was kind of incredible how quickly moderate Democrats uh, immediately started attacking progressives. Immediately, like they didn't even take a moment to celebrate the fact that uh, what they were fear mongering about this entire time, right, Donald Trump. They didn't even take a second, a breather to celebrate the fact that Biden had defeated him. They immediately started playing offense. And what do we repeat on this show over and over again? The fact that Democrats, when it comes to Republicans, never play off offense, never, never, never. But when it comes to progressives in their own party, again, they don't even take a breather. They immediately start throwing punches and they're absolutely wrong. If They've learned all the wrong lessons from these congressional losses. They've learned all the wrong lessons when it came to this general election. They are being lured in and seduced by like the John Kasichs of the world. If you wanna be a Republican, then register as a Republican, leave the party. But if you're not going to fight for the values that the Democratic Party allegedly believes in, then what's the point of being a Democrat? One other thing I want to bring up for Jim Clyburn and all the other Democrats who are like, you know, pushing back against this incredible movement to do something about policing in this country. Okay, fine. So, corporate Democrats who have taken money from corporate donors have decided to latch onto social issues or social unrest in the country for their messaging in order to get reelected, right? They have decided, okay, this is a good way for us to seem like we're still the good guys without having to talk about economic inequality and the economic issues that really do hurt Americans on a regular basis, fine. So if they actually go along with what Clyburn is mentioning and other moderate Democrats are suggesting, what are you gonna campaign on? Like, what are you gonna campaign on then? If you're not gonna talk about the economy, if you're not really gonna talk about healthcare, you're gonna reject Medicare for all, and you're gonna reject what Black Lives Matter is protesting about, what are you gonna campaign on? Who's gonna be the boogeyman in the next election? They don't have a winning message. And and their commentary right now, their takeaway is so stupid and short-sighted. And AOC did break it down really well. So let me do that real quick. Let me mention what she had answered in her New York Times interview because I think she did give incredibly strong answers. I'm gonna skip ahead to where she cites you know, data to prove that she's right about progressive ideology and how popular it is. She says, I've been unseating Democrats for two years. I have been defeating Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee run campaigns for two years. That's how I got to Congress. That's how we elected Ayanna Presley. That's how Jamal Bowman won. That's how Cori Bush won. And so we know about extreme vulnerabilities in how Democrats run campaigns. And then she talks about the lack of digital outreach and canvassing when it comes to these Democratic campaigns. She says, I've looked through a lot of these campaigns that lost. And the fact of the matter is, if you're not spending $200,000 on Facebook with fundraising, persuasion, volunteer recruitment, get out the vote the week before the election, you're not firing on all cylinders. And not a single one of these campaigns that lost were firing on all cylinders. I mean, it's very Hillary Clinton-esque, right? Don't take any responsibility for your failures. Find some other scapegoat, whether it be Russia, whether it be the progressives, just don't take any personal responsibility. She also said this, if I lost my election and I I went out and said, this is moderate's fault. This is because you didn't let us have a floor vote on Medicare for all. And they opened the hood on my campaign and they found that I only spent $5,000 on TV ads the week before the election, they would laugh. And that's what they look like right now trying to blame the movement for black lives for their loss. And then she says, I just don't see how anyone could be making ideological claims when they didn't run a full fledged campaign. Okay, I, I thought her uh, right. interview in the New York Times was, was super strong. Uh, I'm gonna tweak two things uh, because I gotta be honest with you guys. And then, but I'm gonna then read you another great quote from AOC. One is she said, you know, I've been defeating Democrats for these last two years. And then one of the folks she mentioned is Cori Bush. She didn't endorse Cori Bush. So there are good folks who worked on those campaigns and defeated Democrats. And AOC was a huge help in most of them. 
I'm just being honest with you guys. She also talked about how uh, they're telling us to not do a floor vote in Medicare for all. That's the first time I've heard you say that. Uh, you know, progressives outside of power have been asking for a floor vote. I haven't seen progressives inside Congress asking for a floor vote or fighting for one. So I'm keeping it real. But the rest of it was fantastic, including this quote, which was my favorite. If you are the DCCC and you're hemorrhaging incumbent candidates to progressive insurgents, you would think that you may want to use some of those firms. But instead, we ban them. So the DCCC banned every single firm that is the best in the country at digital organizing. That's 100% right. Mm -hmm. And so that's the blacklist. They're like, oh, you guys who are really, really good at beating incumbents in a way that is that we said was impossible. The best that we have in the Democratic Party, none of you are allowed to work for us. <laughs> well, then you wonder why you lost, <laughs> okay? So the idea yeah. of taking help from progressives is an anathema to them. T taking help from Republicans, oh, they love it. They would do that in a second. But that's why they, they dislike progressives more than they dislike Republicans. A anyone arguing otherwise is being ridiculous and Pollyannish and, and not really attached to the facts. And But I got I want to back up AOC's other claims even more. Uh, so Cara Eastman, for example, did lose in uh, Nebraska second. Uh, it was a four point loss, is a tough loss for progressives. She was not an incumbent. Max Rose, on the other hand, in an easier district in New York, was an incumbent and had massive advantage of being an incumbent. Uh, and he ran as a conservative Democrat. Yay, Donald Trump's policies, except I call myself a Democrat. So did he lose by less than Carr Eastman? No, he lost by 16. And I can give you a dozen more examples just like that. In every race where you compare a progressive to a conservative or moderate Democrat, the progressive Democrat did significantly better in similar districts. And Katie Porter is a progressive Democrat, and in a very tough swing district, she won by seven points. It's almost as if the voters like strength and want you to fight for them instead of fighting for the other guy. Because if you fight for the other guy, guess what? The other guy wins by 16 points. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.